Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee weathering five, five days and five minutes as Hurricane Dorian uh, continues to lash the uh, South and North Carolina coast with uh, heavy rains and uh, gale force winds. Uh, and fairly soon, probably going to see hurricane force winds spreading onto some of the coastal areas. The eye is just 80 miles south of Charleston, South Carolina, and about 200 miles south southwest of Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, it's fairly well defined here on the uh, enhanced uh, on, on the infrared satellite loop. And in fact, uh, there was a little bit of deterioration on the west side for a brief moment last night, for maybe a couple of hours. And then you start to see the eye wall just sort of wrap around again. So uh, it looks like it's trying to maintain its Category 3 strength. Uh, it strengthened uh, last night a bit uh, to uh, a Category 3 top winds, 115 miles an hour, and the lowest pressure at 957 millibars. Here's the enhanced satellite loop. Uh, you can see the colder cloud tops. Uh, they warmed up a little bit overnight, particularly on the west side of the storm where we saw that little bit of deterioration. And then the eye wall just comes wrapping around right back uh, this morning. So uh, we'll probably see some fluctuations in strength today. There's uh, There are increasing winds in the upper atmosphere, probably being offset somewhat by the still relatively well-defined core and the fact that we are uh, seeing the storm travel over the Gulf Stream, which is a, a stream of very warm water that exists off the southeast coast of the U.S. and runs up to the Carolinas. So it's getting a little bit of extra juice here, uh, compensating for the, the, the uh, slightly increase, the slight increase in upper air winds and also the interaction uh, with the landmass. We're waiting now. There's an Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft that is departing uh, Biloxi uh, right at the moment uh, and heading uh, toward Dorian. So it won't be there for another uh, hour, hour and a half, and uh, we'll start to get some observations uh, from there. Hurricane warnings are up from just about the Georgia-South Carolina line to the Virginia-North Carolina border, and we're going to see the hurricane track uh, probably they get very, very close to the coast, just uh, to the northeast of Charleston, maybe from uh, Myrtle Beach on north and east, and then possibly right on the coast uh, as we move through North Carolina over uh, near or just east of Wilmington, perhaps, in Jacksonville, North Carolina, uh, over or just west of Cape Hatteras in the Outer Banks. Then it's going to pass to the south and east of New Jersey and Long Island by a fair distance, well over 200 miles. Uh, I think that except for maybe a very short period of time on Friday where you will see um, fringe rains touching southernmost New Jersey and easternmost Long Island, the rest of the area should be fine. We'll probably be sitting in a lot of high clouds and uh, uh, an overcast sky on Friday through much of the, uh, through all of the day as the hurricane goes by to the southeast. Fringe gales will be offshore. Maybe it gets a little bit breezy right along the immediate coast. But if I didn't tell you there was a hurricane offshore, you probably wouldn't know the difference. We do have tropical storm uh, watches up for southeastern Massachusetts, though Cape Cod and the islands, uh, as the, that is uh, Dorian is going to come close enough to perhaps give them tropical storm conditions for at least a few hours. And then it's on to Nova Scotia during the day on Saturday as a powerful uh, transitioning uh, to a post-tropical cyclone. Uh, it's, going to be a, it's going to be very strong with the uh, winds. I would probably suspect that we'll see 50 to 60 mile an hour winds here and heavy rains. And then on to Newfoundland uh, for Sunday. So this is going to affect uh, the Canadian maritime provinces. Two radar views to show you this morning. Uh, you can see it from the Charleston radar, 80 miles south of Charleston, and, and the eye is uh, visible on the Charleston radar uh, with the uh, bands of heavy rain coming ashore. You see a little bit of a deterioration there, and the radar echoes right on the coast. But you can also see that eye wall uh, getting wrapped around again with some uh, heavier uh, thunderstorm activity uh, that is trying to loop all the way around the center. And uh, this is the view from the Wilmington radar, and those red boxes are all tornado warnings that have popped up during the overnight. We're getting some very, very strong bands here of uh, squalls and thunderstorms coming in from the south and sweeping in northwestward. 
and that is producing uh, some tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. And I'm guessing we're going to probably see that uh, through the course of the day as the eye gets closer and closer. So here's how it looks, folks, with regards to uh, the weather models. Of just, they're all pretty close uh, as far as uh, where this is going. And the NAM takes it probably right on the coast near Wilmington. And then over the Outer Banks, you can see it right there. This is for Friday afternoon. Uh, the rain for the areas from Long Island and New Jersey, a little bit touching the coast there. Everybody else from Northeast Virginia through Southern New England uh, uh, it will be fine here and miss everything. And even the NAM uh, just kind of clips Eastern Long Island. You see where the rain gets into Southeastern Massachusetts and into Rhode Island and Eastern Connecticut during friday night as the hurricane at this point is starting to morph into that uh post tropical cyclone uh, that is heading northeastward and here we go for saturday for some rain in in uh in maine and also saturday morning in and around the boston area and cape cod the heaviest rain stays just offshore and now we're dealing with a powerful cyclone moving into uh, Nova Scotia with some very heavy rains and some very strong winds as it heads up to the northeast. Uh, we can just uh, very uh, also just for verification purposes, why don't we just take a look <clears throat> quickly at the European model, and it pr it pretty much has the same idea here, uh, bringing it on the coast very close to uh, uh, this. We can only see in 24 hour increments. So this is to tonight, uh, just uh, east of Charleston, south of Myrtle Beach. By um, Friday night, uh, it is well to the east of North Carolina and offshore. And by um, Saturday night, at 8 o'clock, it is, looks like it's just south of Nova Scotia by a handful of miles. It's a fairly deep uh, extratropical uh, cyclone. Now, as far as our weather is concerned today, we're going to have sunshine with some uh, arriving high clouds of from Northeast Virginia on up into Southern New England. And for the next five days, uh, daytime temperatures are going to be mostly in the 70s. And in fact, for Friday, with the amount of cloud cover, there will be a few places that may have a tough time getting to 70 uh, as far as highs are concerned. So the range looks more like 70 to 75. We'll be in the low to mid 70s on Saturday with improving weather conditions here. Saturday should probably feature a mix of sun and clouds, and then Sunday, uh, uh, thinking partly to mostly sunny, uh, and Monday, partly to mostly sunny, with temperatures generally running uh, in the upper, in the 70s. Low to mid 70s will be the general temperature range uh, for the next five days. So as far as uh, the uh, region that I cover, uh, from uh, Maryland and on up through eastern Pennsylvania, through southern New England, uh, the impacts here with Dorian are going to be uh, in at worst case scenario minimal uh, and of course in best case scenario it'll be non-existent. Uh, the hurricane just tracks too far south and east to cause any major problems. That was pretty much for, uh, where we were at from the get-go in terms of the uh, upper air pattern that existed across the northeast uh, and through the eastern part of the United States. That This just was not a scenario uh, that was likely to bring a hurricane up the East Coast and impact the northern mid-Atlantic states and into southern New England. So enjoy your day, which should be a good one. Uh, some sunshine, some arriving high clouds, temperatures in the 70s, humidity levels low. Can't really ask for too much better for this time of year. All right, that's it for weather in five, which understandably so with everything that's going on. It's uh, weather in nine today, so be sure to check late, the latest website posts, will be, which will be coming up uh, throughout the day. And we will have our uh, regular YouTube live stream tonight at uh, going to shoot for six o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and uh, if we can't, it'll have to, it'll be a bit later. And uh, also, um, consider, folks, by the way, those of you, thank you for those of you who are uh, supporting uh, my page, either through uh, becoming a Facebook supporter or on my Patreon platform. Uh, it's a buck a month, and, if, and it goes a long way to keep uh, uh, ads on the free weather app to an absolute minimum. Uh, and I do appreciate that. Uh, if you're interested, you certainly can support the app, but it's just 99 cents a month. 
by uh, becoming a Facebook supporter. The button is on uh, the uh, post of this uh, video on Facebook. And if you're really weather geeky, I've got my 24-7, uh, or it seems like 24-7 platform on Patreon. Uh, that's patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Choppy. And that's just $2 a month. And you get a lot of extra weather on there, extra videos, and you can message me uh, at any time. And I usually am able to give a timely response. So thank you for those of you who have joined up there. We've, we're about 240 members strong on Patreon and uh, hoping... Uh, to grow it a bit more as we go through the fall and certainly for the winter months. Have a great day, everybody.